Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the E7DF 30 day model for today's uh, first video. So this is taking us through the majority of August, through, through the majority of the final month of summer, uh, uh, summer 2018. Been a long hot summer of course, so far across the UK and much of Northern Europe, so we'll see whether this, uh, this long, hot summer is set to go on into August uh, for today's first video. Coming up later on today, we'll have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days, your usual week to 10 day weather forecast. We're using video will be with you this afternoon. And we'll have some shout outs for our latest uh, donors for GazWebids as well. So that will be coming up uh, this afternoon. But starting us off is a look at the uh, E7DF 30 day ensemble model. So um, this coming to you via the Hungarian uh, Met Office. A big thank you uh, to them for providing. Uh, the 30-day uh, E7DF ensemble model. We can only show you temperature and precipitation anomalies. We can't show you uh, mean sea level pressure or 500 millibar heights, unfortunately, uh, in this update. Eventually, more and more of this uh, data is coming online from the E7WF. So I think, in the end, we are going to be able to show you the full range of products available from uh, the ECM uh, WF in terms of the 30 day and also the 46 day um, uh, ensembles. I think in the end we will be able to show you everything, but it is just slowly being brought uh, out there onto the internet. Uh, so parts are still restricted in the moment. The uh, 500 millibar height and mean sea level pressure anomalies uh, with these 30 and 46 day ensembles uh, are still restricted. But as I say, eventually I think all of this will be uh, online. That's certainly been the trend over the past sort of year to 18 months that more and more of the information provided from the ECMDF that was completely restricted. All, all of this stuff was restricted uh, just a couple of years ago. So I think eventually more and more of this will uh, come online. But we can get a broad idea anyway of what the uh, sort of height and pressure anomalies will be based on the temperature and precipitation anomalies. So we'll begin by having a look at the temperature anomalies across Europe for the uh, coming week. So this is taking us from uh, yesterday, 30th of July through to the 5th of August. And we see that uh, much of uh, Europe is going to be very, very hot uh, once again. So we've got these deep orange and red uh, colours here across much of northern, central and western, southwestern. And uh, Europe, the core of the heat is actually through Germany and down into eastern parts of France, where we're going up to between 6 and 10 degrees above average. Very, very hot temperature anomalies through central parts of Europe. But all parts of Europe really are coming out with a substantially warmer than average temperature anomaly. And so you get the idea of where the high pressure will be sitting. The high pressure will be sitting through here and then down through there and then going through there and then probably extending out into the Atlantic as well. Now, a cooler part of uh, Europe in terms of the anomaly to average is this southeastern corner as it has been through most of the summer. So through southern Italy, over the Adriatic into the Balkans have been down towards like Romania and then further south in towards uh, Greece. Those areas coming out with a cooler than average temperature anomaly. But bear in mind that's still going to be very hot. It's an anomaly to average uh, and the average for say Greece at this time of year is going to be very hot. So although the temperature is like a couple of degrees cooler than average that will still be really really hot. Um, for the UK and for Ireland where we're coming out warmer than average in week ahead. Another very warm week coming up. Not as hot as some parts of Europe except in central parts of England where uh, the anomaly is on a par with much of sort of uh, northern Europe. But uh, it's coming out warmer than average, really, through the UK and for Ireland, with temperature anomalies generally between around 1 and 3 degrees above average. But that central part of England coming out between 3 and 6 degrees hotter than average. As far as the precipitation anomaly is concerned, so it's wetter than average again in this southeastern corner, southern Italy, uh, through the Balkans, down to Greece. Again, it's coming out a little bit wetter than average there. Anomalies to average means that it could still be fairly dry, and most of that will probably be hit and miss thunderstorms. Uh, also, northern parts of Scandinavia, a little bit of a change there. 
slightly little bit wetter than average there. But the rest of Europe is generally coming out drier than average once again. So the long, hot, dry summer of 2018 goes on. In the week here from the 30th of uh, July through to the 5th of August, we're coming out hotter and drier than average across most parts of Europe. And the UK and Ireland is uh, included in that. This is week two. It's taking us from the 6th through to the 12th of uh, August. So we find that these eastern parts of Europe are actually turning a little bit wetter uh, through this week. So um, kind of like east was from Poland, uh, east it's generally uh, a little bit wetter than average. Uh, and then we come out into central western parts of Europe and that's where it's still substantially drier than average. So uh, southern parts of Scandinavia to Denmark and then down to Germany, uh, Belgium, Holland, France, over to the UK and Ireland, and then through Spain, Portugal, and much of the Mediterranean is coming out uh, with a warmer than average uh, week there from the 6th through to the 12th of August. Perhaps not quite as hot as it is in week one. The anomaly isn't as extreme, uh, but nevertheless, still warmer than average across the west of Europe and a bit cooler than average over in the east of Europe. It does look as though Scandinavia is cooling down. Southern parts of uh, Norway and Sweden coming out a little bit warmer than average, but overall many parts of Scandinavia uh, from uh, Norway in the west over to Finland uh, in the east, many parts are actually going uh, cooler uh, there. So a bit of a change in terms of the SOT2 pattern setting up through that week, the 6th through to the 12th of uh, August. As far as precipitation is concerned, we find that where it's warmest, it's also driest. So again, for southern Scandinavia, down through Denmark into Germany, Belgium, Holland, over to France, up to the UK and Ireland, those areas are coming out uh, with a drier than average week. That actually leaves most of Scandinavia uh, close to average with precipitation, and uh, also much of southeastern Europe is coming out a little bit above average with precipitation, again, from Corsica, Sardinia, Italy, over the Adriatic into the Balkans, down towards uh, Greece and those southeastern countries, uh, Romania, uh, it is coming out uh, with a slightly wetter than average week uh, there. The western basin of the Mediterranean is uh, turning out to be a little bit closer to average or maybe a bit of a drier than average side uh, actually. Then we're through to week three, taking us from the 13th to the 19th of August, and the warm temperature anomalies continue for much of northern, central, western Europe. No change, so another very warm uh, month coming up, if this is correct, because now we're into the middle and second half of August. It's coming out with a significantly uh, warmer than average temperature anomaly. Warming up over Scandinavia again. Uh, actually through this week so the first week is a little bit uh it's a little bit uh, uh cooler across scandinavia but by this middle part of august actually coming out a little bit uh warmer than average once again uh down southeast so those areas remain largely uh wetter than average and cooler uh, than average the southern part or southwestern part of uh, of uh, europe that's coming out close to average with temperatures uh, precipitation, so most of the Mediterranean looks rather uh, above average with the rainfall through this week from the 13th to the 19th of August. The signal is weakening as it often does with precipitation in these longer range models. Still looking drier than average through central parts of Europe. Scandinavia down to the UK and for Ireland we're close to average uh, there in that week. So possibly hinting at turning a little bit more unsettled. Although the temperature normally continues to hold up, that's a strange thing. About this, we go through to the 20th to the 26th of uh, August, so through towards the end of the month. And again, most central, northern, western parts of Europe are coming out with a warmer than average week uh, in this uh, last sort of full week of August. It's southern Europe where the temperature anomalies are closer to average. Uh, as far as precipitation is concerned, again, the signal is weakening, but we still hint perhaps of uh, being a little bit drier around Denmark, southern parts of Scandinavia, maybe close to the UK as well. So even then, even towards the end of the month, 20th, 26th August, we're possibly still hinting having quite a lot of high pressure going on in the northwest of Europe. Elsewhere, close to average precipitation, that might be because it's turning more unsettled. More likely, it's just because the model is losing the signal for precipitation the further out it's going. But you see that southern Europe continues to look rather more unsettled compared 
to Northern Europe. So even to the end of August, I don't think the ECMWF model is seeing much change to the broad pattern. I think it still wants to have this idea of quite a lot of high pressure through Scandinavia, through the UK, going out into the Atlantic, quite a lot of ridging uh, in that area, and then more in the way of low pressure tending to be across southern parts of uh, Europe, which as which has been the pattern that's been ongoing uh, really since May, and it looks like broadly that's the way the ECMWF 30 down ensembles are wanting to trend things. So no real change, certainly for the next couple of weeks. It looks like many parts of central, northern, west Europe will continue to be uh, hot, very warm or hot, and pretty dry as well. Always coolest and more unsettled to average in the east and the southeast of Europe. The second half of August is a little bit more uncertain, I think, due to the weakness of the anomalies. But overall, the temperatures are holding up above average for the north and the west and the central part of Europe right way through towards month's end. And where it does turn a bit more unsettled, I'm not sure through that second half of August. But uh, overall, you wouldn't say there's a great deal to go on if you're looking for a change in this weather pattern. So I expect more quite hot weather to come uh, over the next couple of weeks, certainly, and a lot of dry conditions uh, too. Right, we'll do it all again uh, next week when uh, we'll just about be extending into September, I think, with uh, these updates. So uh, come back for that next week. Later on this afternoon, we'll have a look in detail at the weather for the next week uh, to 10 days. So come back for that as well. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.